faithful in church, blessing will overtake you, but not necessarily a pocket full of hundred dollar bills. There is no, no shame in all he just went on. If you work at Burger King, you ought to be ashamed and all that. Listen, let me tell you something. If you got an honest job, you ain't robbing, you ain't stealing, rejoice. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You got more faith than somebody working at Bell Telephone making $250,000 a year. You got more faith. Count the people in true holiness making $250,000 a year. Count them. You can't count because there ain't none to count. Count the doctors. Lawyers, senators, congressmen, governors, in true holiness. Now don't count them, because you'll be wasting your time. It's about having God in you. Not about how much money you're making on your job. God said he'll pro provide your needs and he'll do just that. And that don't mean to say that you don't pray for a better job. And sometimes God will give you a better job. But don't, don't, don't get all bent out of shape because he didn't. Well, I want a job like uh, brother so-and-so God, You ain't brother so-and-so. <laughs> Forget about it. Be yourself. And whatever you can do, do it right. Pay your tithes and be faithful unto God. And let, let God worry about the rest of it. I'm trying to show you how you don't get wounded in your soul. And a lot of people been hurt because, well, they got a man suing Robert Tilton now. Robert Tilton sent, sent, sent me $5,000. He said, well, I got to mortgage my home. Step out on faith, mortgage your home. The man ended up mortgaging his home and, and sending Robert Tilton $5,000, and the man ended up losing his home. But Robert Tilton ain't lost his. So where's that $5,000 go? To God? Cattle on a thousand years belong to God. Where'd that 5,000 go? That 5,000 go went to that preacher so he would have a $500,000 home. And you done lost your eighty or $90,000 home because you listened to a false prophet told you that if you plant the seed right. Yeah, I, I don't have nothing against planting the seed. But you better make sure you know what you're doing when you plant that seed. <laughs> Hallelujah. You cannot buy a blessing from heaven. Pay your tithes faithfully. Give your offering. And I told you how to give offering, didn't I? I said, close your eyes, and in five seconds, know how much shall I give? And he'll speak, boom, just like that. Whether it's 50 cents, five dollars, or five hundred dollars, whatever. Then he ain't gonna tell you to put in what you can't put in. That preacher said, send me five thousand dollars and do it by faith. Well, I don't have five thousand. That's right. Uh, make a pledge. God's ministry is not like that. God's ministry is to save souls. Amen. Not to rob and, and steal from the people. Amen. Turn over to, amen, I'm just happy to go this way, but praise the Lord. Uh, turn over to Second Epistle of Peter, chapter 2, from verse 1. Now, this is a prophecy here the apostle's given. He's telling you right now there was false prophets then and there'll be false prophets now. Read. Who privately shall bring a damnable heresy, even deny the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves with destruction. Uh-huh, verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. Many shall follow their evil ways. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. See, when a, when a true man of God comes and teaches the people the truth, they really don't want to hear it. Those who don't have a mind to hear the truth. Now watch. Verse 3. And through covetousness shall they with vain words. Through covetousness shall they with tricky words. Make merchandise of you who does it now a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. Make merchandise of you. Amen. Other words you nothing but as I've said before a dollar sign. You have to understand church how to weigh a balance how to weigh a balance by allowing the spirit to lead. And the spirit will tell you what to give, when to give, how much to give, and the spirit will never lead you wrong. We have to understand, church, that false prophets are saturating 
and they're trying to create a church that's based on finances, financial gain. Everybody in the church is supposed to be rich. God said the poor we have with us always. I believe it said rich in faith. The poor, rich in faith. Don't have a lot of money, but got a whole lot of faith. Hallelujah. So develop an understanding that it's not in the material gain or the material sense. It's rather in the quality of the spirit that you have. And once you're able to understand that, then you're not going to let certain little setbacks come to knock you down. How come I'm going through this financial situation? How come, praise the Lord, I got this cut off notice? Don't worry about those things. Let God handle it. And God will handle it. And one thing is for certain. When you're in a true church, we take care of each other as a family. Is that right? Amen. Ain't nobody going hungry at true light. God ain't going to let us go hungry. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Let's, I want to connect this with Revelation, the sixth chapter. And start right at verse 9. I saw unto the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Now this means died in the faith. Not necessarily preaching and somebody bust them over the head and killed them. But it's talking about anyone who dies holding on to the faith. And when you open the fifth seal, I saw unto the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. And what? And for the testimony that they died holding on to. I opened up and I told you, don't ever let the devil tell you that you're not saved. Don't ever let the devil put doubt in your mind. You've got to keep your testimony till Jesus Christ splits the sky or till God calls you home. This is very important. Never doubt who you are. And that's why I said you don't base uh, the quality of your relationship with God on what you have in the material sense. Because this will trick you. It will trap you. It will cause you to stumble. David once said, I saw the prosperity of the wicked and I nearly fell. In other words, he had his eyes set on those men who were seemingly prospering so much and wasn't saved. Wasn't trying to be saved. So when you keep your uh, affections on things are seemingly what the world is doing and what the world seems to be accomplishing this creates a lack of doubt in you for God because you say well why don't I have that which that brother got and he ain't even trying to go to church I hope you catch this and don't miss this but if you keep your focus on Jesus and not about what I have but what I got in here hallelujah this is what this is what causes me to overcome sickness. This is what caused me to overcome depression. This is what caused me to overcome the trials and tribulations I go through on the job place. Oh, there's some devils you can run across on the job place. You don't even know why they're there. They were there because they're trying your faith. Amen. You got to be tested. Nobody is going to receive a crown. Unless they are tested. You got to be tried. T turn over to 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter right quick. Slain for the testimony that they had. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now obviously it's talking to a saved person. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Read. If any man defiles the temple of God, the temple shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple are ye are. Someone called me from California yesterday. And they said, uh, Pastor, I'm trying to tell some of the people who smoke 
that they're not saved. 